Um, so as we look ahead here, about a month to go, and the Cubs have not been playing very well, actually have lost uh, six of their last eight following that great stretch. The Pirates, however, have dropped four in a row. The Giants have lost six in a row. And I guess the big note here with what's remaining is if the Giants want to get back into this race, they are playing a lot of teams under 500. Uh, yeah, so obviously the Cubs still have to take care of business. If the Cubs play anywhere near 500 baseball, you feel very good about their chances of beating the Giants. But the Cubs, obviously within reach of the Pittsburgh Pirates, just four behind Pittsburgh, six games remaining with the Buccos, including a big four-game series on this next road trip. So Cubs comfortably out in front of the Giants, still with a shot to run down Pittsburgh and potentially host that wild card game. The Pirates are in St. Louis uh, this weekend, and the Giants lost last night, got blown out in Colorado, and they have three more against the Rockies in Denver, and those games will be later tonight. So the big news here for the Cubs is they're going to be without Kyle Schwarber for another three to five days. He's got a strained right rib cage. Let's first hear from the manager, Joe Madden. Uh, when you talk to him, he thinks he wants he wants to play today, of course. Um, but we're going to just uh, chill a little bit right now, figure it out, and then move on from there. But we don't anticipate too bad. With your experience with this, um, <clears throat> these things can get worse if they're not watched right. Is that, is that it? Yeah, I mean, you just don't know. You really don't know. So you just have to, like we're doing right now, permit it to calm down. Once it calms down, you get a better read, and then you take it from there. Um, uh, you know, our trainers and everybody, the docs have a lot of experience with this. So, and the big thing was that Schwarb shut it down immediately when he felt something, and that was a good thing. And to uh, continue to test it or try to do more. So we think it's going to be well. Hopefully, it's going to be fine. A pretty prescient move in acquiring Austin Jackson from the Mariners. He's going to be in there playing right today, and we might see him a fair amount here the next few days. Yeah, so more, uh, important to have depth and have versatility. So we've seen Coglin play all over the field. He moves back over to left field. It just makes perfect sense to, to wait a little bit with Schwarber. Usually the rule of thumb is when the player tells you he's ready with an injury like that, wait another day or two just to make sure. Javier Baez will get the start at second base, his second start since returning from a AAA Iowa 0 for 5 so far this week. When we come back, we will hear from Kyle Schwarber and uh, get his thoughts on this injury. Kelly Kroll coming back after the break as we get set for the Cubs hosting the Diamondbacks.
starting at 6 o'clock. Get to know striker David Akam on a brand new episode of Inside Look. Then watch the men in red try to make their move in the standings against Montreal. It all starts tomorrow night at 6 o'clock on CSN. Well, welcome back to Wrigley Field. Cubs and Diamondbacks get set for a three-game set this weekend. Of course, Madden's Club feeling pretty good after a day off, but they will be without the services of Kyle Schwarber this weekend. Out three to five days, said he felt some soreness in his rib cage after taking a check swing in the cages before Wednesday's game. And uh, not something Kyle's really ever felt before, but he sat down with the media to talk about the injury before today's game. Yeah, I, I mean, I wanted to play it uh, two days ago, but, you know, this just uh, went and talked to uh, Skip and Skip, Skip wanted to rest and uh, make sure I'm 100% before I get back there. Would you predict that you'll be back for the Cardinals? Uh, you know, I, I, I really do hope so. You know, I, I want, that's my goal is to get back to that series and, uh, you know, be able to help the team in any way possible. Is it very you know, it, it is hard because, you know, you want to go out there and you want to help this team win, and we're in, we're in a playoff race right now, and uh, it is a little bit frustrating, but, you know, that, that's part of the that's part of the game. You know, you have to let your body heal and uh, make sure you're 100% because if you're not 100%, you're hurting the team. Kyle, have you ever been through anything similar to this? No. Was there any fear that it might be something worse other than just a small strain? You know, I saw Jorge about with the oblique thing. Was there any fear of that? Uh, no. You know, I mean, we, we got the doctor's opinion on it. And, uh, you know, we said let, let it rest for a couple of days and we'll reevaluate from there. Uh, this is a typical, uh, you know, this, there's going to be a lot of stretching, a lot of, uh, you know, treatment-wise stem and, uh, you know, icing and, uh, a lot of other things, medicine, so it's just making sure I get back to be 100%. You get the sense it's going to be a tough couple days for Kyle Schwarber, sidelined there in the dugout, but the Cubs will reevaluate him in three to five days and move forward from there. And we move forward as we take a quick timeout after the break. Lynn and J.D. will be back with the call game one of a three-game set between the Cubs and the Diamondbacks. John Lester on the mound. We will see you right after this.
It's an early start to the holiday weekend, and Cub fans chatting with a Hall of Famer, Fergie Jenkins. He'll be signing autographs all weekend, raising money for the Fergie Foundation and the Ron Santo Foundation as well. And we're set for Cubs baseball on Comcast Sportsnet. After an off day yesterday, the Cubs welcome in the Arizona Diamondbacks in the first of three. And refreshed and ready to go after the off day, Jim Deshays and Len Casper. The wind is blowing in, and before we get into the matchup, let's update the National League wildcard standings. The Cubs, obviously, right now are probably in that one-and-done kind of mix because they're ten-and-a-half behind the Cardinals. But actually, the Pirates and Giants have done the Cubs a favor here the last week or so. Yeah, the Cubs have been uh, scuffling a little bit. They've lost their last three series, but the Giants have lost six ball games in a row. The Pirates have lost four in a row, so the Cubs obviously missed an opportunity to gain ground on the Pirates, but still very comfortably out in front of the Giants. So the Diamondbacks come in. They're under 500. They're kind of a mid-level team in their division right now, but, man, they can hit. Yeah, they score a lot of runs. They're a pitcher or two away from being a very good club, a good team to keep an eye on in the future. We take a look at their numbers this year. They lead the National League in hits, second in runs. They steal bases. Uh, that's always a factor when John Lester's on the mound. We'll see how hard Chip Hale chooses to push it here today with his base runners. And one good bit of news for the Cubs, their best player, Paul Goldschmidt, not here today. His wife had their first child a couple of days ago. He is likely back for game two tomorrow. So it will be the left-hander, John Lester, for the Cubs. Right-hander, Zach Godley, a rookie who actually was acquired by the Diamondbacks from the Cubs over the winter in the Miguel Montero deal. He'll go for Arizona. D-backs and Cubs are next. Brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. AT&T U-verse. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. Mobilizing your world. Ford. Check out America's freshest lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Welcome back to the ballpark. The wind is blowing in. That has been a rarity as of late. Temperatures cooling off just a bit, but it should get hot once again uh, over the weekend, the last couple of days of this homestand. And happy Labor Day weekend, everybody. 
Traffic wasn't that bad coming in today, so I think a lot of people uh, got off work early. Settle in, have a little picnic, watch some hardball, enjoy this fine weather as we uh, bid adieu to summer. In theory, we want to welcome all our viewers watching on Colo Telephone in uh, Colo, Iowa, here today. Diamondbacks off yesterday, as were the Cubs. And big road trip coming up, so certainly would be nice to take a two of three this weekend after dropping a series to the Cincinnati Reds. Cubs, as I mentioned earlier, lost six of their last eight. The good news is the Pirates have lost four in a row going into their matchup with the Cardinals tonight. And the Giants have dropped six straight, so the Cubs now with a Seven game lead over their nearest rival in the wild card race. Yeah, the Cubs theoretically could continue to lose two out of three, and still the Giants would have to go pretty good to, to overtake them. Now, I wouldn't recommend that, and I don't expect that to happen, but the Cubs are in a very favorable position. So, any, you know, anything close to 500 ball the rest of the way, and uh, they should be in really good shape. But they want more than that. They have a chance at running down the Pirates. Obviously, that's worth doing if you could claim that. First wild card spot and host that playing game. Uh, so very important games uh, coming up. This is the nature of September baseball when you're in the thick of the race. Cubs have their opening day starter on the mound today. They've got Jake Arietta, 17 game winner, coming off a no hitter in his last start. Uh, he'll go tomorrow, and then Kyle Hendricks on Sunday. Zach Godley, who was in the Cubs system. Traded in the Miguel Montero deal over the winter today. A left hander, Robbie Ray, who has a decent ERA but a bad record tomorrow. And then Ruby De La Rosa, 12 game winner, a right hander for the Diamondbacks on Sunday. And Lester has just finished his bullpen warm up. De La Rosa is the opposite of Ray. He's got a winning record but a high ERA. He's enjoyed great run support as a number of these. Diamondback pitchers have as we mentioned previously this is a very good offensive club they remind me a little bit of the Kansas City team um, as that team developed uh, a lot of good athletes on the field they cover a lot of ground high average hitters they take extra bases uh, and, and obviously they have uh, one big guy in the middle of that lineup Paul Goldschmidt uh, MVP candidate perennially now. Uh, not here now because uh, they just welcomed their first child on Wednesday. Um, we suggest that Paul just go ahead and take some extra time, spend the weekend with the family, get <laughs> caught up, make sure everybody's uh, doing well back in Phoenix. And he is uh, a great all-around player, not only offensively, he's terrific with the glove, he steals bases. And uh, you said a perennial... MVP candidate and maybe wins it last year if he didn't miss the last two months. Yeah, I'm real good shot. Yep. So um, it's like uh, looking in a mirror, reverse image of uh, Rizzo. Goldschmidt, a right handed hitter, Anthony from the left side. But uh, everything you just said about Goldschmidt also applies to Rizzo. Great offensive player, tremendous defender, steals bases. It's like a nice crowd here today. Bleacher's already just about full. Slightly hazy as the sun peeking its way through the clouds. Let's check out the umpire and crew today. James Hoy, ahoy, working home plate. That never gets old. Bill Welke is at first. John Hirschbeck, the crew chief, is at second. And Chicago area native John Tumpain. Will handle third. Good crowd here in the ballpark. Lively atmosphere. See a lot of UT people here. Longhorns must be in town to play the Irish. Also want to welcome those watching us around the world on the American Forces Network. Also we're on ESPN UK. And across the country on the MLB network. Glad to have you with us. The so, only show in town. That's right.
like these Friday matinees, especially when you win them and you hold serve. The Diamondbacks Southwest starting lineups. Really good hitters. Look at these batting averages. Ender in Ciarte plays right. Phil Gosselin recently came off the DL. They got him uh, from Atlanta earlier this year. A.J. Pollock has put together a great season. Wellington Castillo, third team this year, and he has been terrific at the plate with the Diamondbacks. So has David Peralta. He's in left. Yasmani Tomas, a rookie from Cuba, making his first career start at first today. Chris Owings and Nick Ahmed make up the double play combo. And the former Cub farmhand, Zach Godley, will do the pitching. Cubs defensively, it's brought to you by Sleepy's, the only mattress professionals. Coglin Fowler, Austin Jackson, left center right. Around the horn will go Bryant, Russell, Baez, and Rizzo. David Ross back behind the plate. Uh, for John Lester, he's our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher. John, he wins 10 losses as he takes them out for the 27th time. He's pitched to a 3.59 ERA. He hits 2.53 against him. Done a nice job keeping the ball in the ballpark. He's allowed only 14 home runs. He has a favorable win today. He has pitched uh, against this Diamondback club. Three times in his career, including once earlier this year at Dandy, out in the desert, went seven innings, allowed two runs, got a no decision. So lefty against lefty to get us started. And uh, the, one of the other things this Diamondback Club you know, leads the league in, or you know, they showed you that leaderboard or their their rankings. Uh, they lead the league in bunt hits. And you got a handful of guys, NCRD being one of them, who likes to use the bunt as a weapon. And here we go. Ball one to Inciarte. 24 years old. Second major league season. Can play all three outfield spots. He's in right. To start this one. Uh, Very good defender. Speedy guy. Doesn't hit for power. You would say that the bunt is part of Ender's game. It's the last time I'm going to say that this weekend. <laughs> but I had to get it out. It was yeah. dying to get out. One and two on him. 74 degrees and a northeast wind. He's blowing straight in from center. Not particularly hard. His low line drives. Still find their way to the bleachers. This one punched foul in the air behind third. Lester will field. And the underhand flip just. Got him. Not a bump, but a swinging bunt essentially by NCRD and Lester challenged early. Up to the task with the underhand toss to get him. So here's Gosselin. Acquired. From Atlanta in June. He was on the DL at the time with a left thumb fracture and just came back on a Monday. So, four games with Arizona. Play second, third, short, and also the outfield in a pinch. 26 years old to the University of Virginia. Bounced foul, one and one. Getting his first start since coming back from the family medical emergency list. Del Montero caught Lester in Los Angeles last weekend. Interesting Montero not in the lineup today against a guy he was traded for, Zach Godley. Fly ball to right. 
Jackson is over and the wind is going to push it out of play. So the other day that ball might have been playable. But with the wind direction. Not so much today. The ball will get knocked down towards left. It'll carry towards the line and right. Lester, when he's at his best, gets a fair number of strikeouts and a lot of ground ball outs. Pounds the bottom of the strike zone, as you see there on our Menards pitch tracks. Managed by Chip Hale and on the bases today, Dave McKay, first former Cubs coach. Andy Green across the way at third. Jackson is in. Baez will give way. Two outs. Crack bat flare in the shallow right. Watch Javi Baez immediately break back on this ball, but Jackson was shallow. Priority goes to the outfielder there. So Pollock hitting third with Goldschmidt not here. And again, he is expected to arrive in Chicago tonight. He'll be in the lineup tomorrow. AJ Pollock, a first time All Star, putting together a terrific season. He has scored 93 runs. He has 33 steals. Look at what he's done against lefties. Yeah, he's uh, not a big name yet, but he will be. I mean, people around the game certainly know him. I don't think the casual fans have a real understanding of how good this guy is. Notre Dame product. So we'll be rooting against Texas tomorrow. For sure. Caught by Russell. A little up back liner. And Lester goes one, two, three in the first. The Cubs are coming up against Zach Godley. Depot will donate $100 to Make a Wish Illinois and construction here just to the west of the ballpark. They're going fast. Cubs will have their new clubhouse all set for 2016. Now the Cubs Southwest starting lineup. They have the worst batting average in baseball, but middle of the pack in on base percentage due to all the walks. Fowler, Jackson, Hoglin at the top. Rizzo, Bryant, Baez in the middle. Ross Lester Russell at the bottom. He backs defensively brought to you by Sleepy's Peralta Pollock and Ciarte in the outfield. Goslin 
Ahmed, who can really pick it on the uh, left side of the infield. Second is Owens. First is Tomas for the first time ever as a starter. And Wellington Castile is behind the dish. Likes the starting pitcher. And the rookie ready, Zach Godley. This one has to mean a little more to Godley than his other starts so far as he's working with a former Cub, Wellington Castile. He was sent to Arizona in the offseason. He was actually a reliever in the Cubs system. The Diamondbacks have made him a starter. And he's been really good. Yeah, he was really good in the minor leagues, A ball, double A, and ultimately the big leagues. He's made three starts plus two appearances out of the bullpen in his starts. He's pitched scoreless baseball in two of the three. Because he pitched uh, out of the bullpen in the Cubs system last year, his innings total was not very high. He has sprinted past that, and the plan is that he'll make one more start against the Giants after this and then finish the year in the Diamondbacks bullpen. It's three and one on Fowler. Extra hitting 302 in the second half and healthy on base percentage during that stretch will increase with this leadoff walk. I don't know if there's extra butterflies for Godley here today facing his, the organization he was with drafted by the Cubs in 2013 in the 10th round or if there's extra butterflies because it's Wrigley Field it would be understandable if that were the case. Um, but there's a lot of butterflies to begin with when you're a young pitcher you know just making his fourth major league start so there'd be a lot of extra adrenaline. To, if this game was being played in a parking lot somewhere. Are you saying that leadoff walk might have been ungodly? <laughs> Only time I'll say it. So we each have one. What? A strike on Austin Jackson. Then you can get into the whole Angel Pagan but Pagan thing when they play the Giants. Swing and a miss. As Holly mentioned in the pregame show, this guy likes to throw his cut fastball. He was born in Bamberg, South Carolina. Now drafted out of high school by the Mets in the 50th round, did not sign, went to college at the University of Tennessee. Yeah, I guess he'd be considered a Bamberger. And he joins former major leaguers Mookie Wilson and Preston. Wilson from Bamberg, uh, from Bamberg, South Carolina, small town in the middle of the state. Before he went to Tennessee, he attended Spartanburg Methodist College. Ooh, swing and a miss, Ooh. four strike three. That, that was, was a coming right? bird there, yeah. That was a real quick lane changer. He also throws a sinker, a curveball, and a change. You can see why he's been effective. Late movement there to get Jackson. And you take that one and you elevate it a little bit and run it in on the hands of the lefties. You can induce some weak contact there. Here's Chris Coglin. He's playing left. If Kyle Schwarber were healthy and in the lineup today, Coglin's probably still in the lineup and playing right. Schwarber, as we mentioned on the pregame show. We'll miss the next three to five days. Then they'll reassess things with the strained right rib cage and a strike on Coughlin. 100th start of the year for Chris. And the pitch outside for ball one. One and one. Been pretty deep in the outfield. Double play depth around the infield. So moving parts with no Goldschmidt today. As Tomas at first. Goslin playing third. And a strike call. And if you hit the ball anywhere near Nick Ahmed, it's probably going to end up being an out. He is one of the elite glove man at that position in all of baseball. 
Silky smooth. Good arm, great range. Two and two. In the day with the wind blowing in, you're more inclined to use the running game instead of just laying back and waiting to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Small sample, but Godley has proven to be a pretty good ground ball pitcher so far at the big league level. Yeah, he he likes to to work down in the strike zone, as does John Lester. So we're going to see a fair amount of ground balls today. Two two, that one in the air and could get down, and it will. Good read by Fowler. Actually, around second and was thinking about third as Peralta played it on a bounce. So they're at the corners with only one out. Well, Wonder, you didn't hit it all that hard, but well placed. Coglin will take it. Early chance here for Rizzo. Yeah, it's funny with the wind. I mean, you can't just say the wind blows out, it helps the offense. Mostly it does, but we've commented on certain foul balls that might be out of play in this small ballpark. You might buy another out or two on a foul pop up if you're a pitcher. And conversely, with the wind blowing in, a batter might send one down the line that ends up in the seats and foul, and you give yourself another chance. Or, like that Coglin play, uh, that wind pushed it away from the left fielder mm -hmm. Peralta. Pulled it up a little bit. Yeah. There's always a yeah but in this game, it seems <laughs> like. <laughs> One and zero oh on Rizzo. He homered on Wednesday. Got 11 over his last 33 games. He's got 98 home runs now in his career. And overall, last couple of weeks, Anthony has been scuffling. I said corners with one out, first and second with one out, as Fowler could only advance one. Dangerous pitch here for Godley. Want to know part of him. 3 0. Bryant on deck. A former minor league teammate of Zach Godley, briefly in Boise in 2013. Pitcher strike, three and one. Mike Harkey, the pitching coach, looks on. There it is. He walked him and they're loaded. Really fell off that pitch. That's the pitch of a guy that just does not want to challenge the strike zone. He saw Castillo go through a signal of signs and then point down. So he's looking just going to be a good sinker down in the zone here. And, and Godley just didn't commit to the pitch at all. He wanted no part of Rizzo there in a 3 1 count. Early visit to the mound by Mike Harkey. And an early look at our ATT U verse multi view. Two walks and a flare single, setting it up for Chris Bryant. And on the off day yesterday, a couple of honors passed along to Chicago Cubs, but neither a surprise at all. Jake Arrieta, the National League Pitcher of the Month. And for the second time this year, Bryant is the Rookie of the Month. Also won it in May. Ball one. 
Better pitch there by Godley, but he didn't get the call. Borderline at the knees, so he's behind Bryant here with the bases loaded. Bryant hit a dramatic game tying two run homer in the eighth inning Wednesday and then committed the big error in the ninth, helping the Reds win the game 2 0. But he stood up, talked to the media, didn't make any excuses, but he handled it well. He's handled everything well from the minute he first signed his professional contract. Well, I think he realizes this is a very tough game, and then he's also very good at it. Two and one. Well, and the other thing, too, is let other people make excuses for you. Because, you know, Joe Madden did it. I did it after it happened. That's a tough play when a left handed power hitter hits the ball on the ground in that direction. You don't anticipate it. But, you know. As I said, let somebody else make the excuse for you. Just, yeah, should have had it. Move on. Missed again, three and one. Godly laboring here in the first inning. Baez waits on deck. Cubs trying to jump on the rookie early. Chris hit here the other day um, was a towering home. I lost sight of it. Wind was blowing out that day. There was what five home runs in the game on Wednesday. Well, for an environment today with the wind blowing in. Three and two, bases loaded, one out. Here it is. He just forced in a run. One nothing Cubs. Bryant will get an RBI. His 85th of the season. Now now's when you really want to step on the gas pedal. You've got this rookie out there in a hostile environment, fighting himself, can't find the strike zone with any consistency. Now, having said that, <laughs> I'm not I'm not arguing that because of three walks, Baez should have a passive approach here. Anything but, and he should be looking for. You know, something right in the heart of the strike zone right here and go ahead and unleash. Second start. So it's coming up from Triple A Iowa. A nice block by Wellington Castillo on a pitch in the dirt. Bobby was hot at Iowa before he got here. The 16 game hitting streak during which he batted. 444. Sitting in a pretty good spot here. Low stance. 2 0. Oh. Oh, he's missed badly yeah, in these well, first he, two. He, he, uh, he, <laughs> he, he certainly knows the reputations of, of Rizzo and Bryant. And Baez and the power that they have, and he's hoping that they get themselves out. He's hoping that they'll expand their zone. Um, and Javi clearly will if you get ahead of him. Um, he's he's teetering on the edge right now. The pitching coach had that look of, am I going to need to get somebody up in the first inning? He's hoping not to. Baez gets into one here. It doesn't really matter a whole lot which way the wind is blowing. Two zero. -oh. <laughs> Harkey on the phone. We had that shot next to him on the bench. Chip Hale, arms folded, in that stressed out manager look. <laughs> Working the gum extra hard. Play. Stottlemyer Jr. down there, the bullpen coach. He might be having some communication issues. Okay, now. Now it worked. Who? Who? Is he even here? Let me check the roster. Oh, wait a minute. We got 57 guys down here in September. Let's 
Two balls, two strikes. From Josh Coleman. Almost hit him. Some starting as well as work out of the bullpen this year. Baez much closer to home plate than he used to be. He's closed up his stance. He's trying to minimize the leg kick some. He says he you know, still uses it, but not as often. Maybe a little more spread out here on 3 2. Payoff pitch. He walked in. That's four in the inning. And Baez will get an RBI. It's 2 nothing. Pitching coach has been out. Castillo has been out once or twice. Shortstop Ahmed now in talking to the young right hander. So if you go back to his major league debut versus Milwaukee, he became the first pitcher in the modern era to go six innings with no walks and at least seven strikeouts in his debut. Today, he's only recorded one out and he's already walked four. And not to belabor the point, but uh, you know, there are days at Wrigley when the wind is blowing out when you, you're trying to spend as little time in the zone as possible. Today is not one of those days. Called strike. So Godley brought back from Double A. He has never pitched at Triple A. Right-hander Jefferson Mejia. And Godley to the Cubs for Miguel Montero. Hit the deep right, and it'll be caught. Tagging and scoring is Anthony Rizzo. 3 0. Sack fly, David Ross. Three runs on one hit, and it'll bring up John Lester. So important there to obviously keep the ball in the air, stay out of a double play, and a good job by Ross. Elevating there. The eighth batter of the inning. Swing and a miss. Four walks, a single, and a sack fly. That's the second. Boeing's up with it, and the inning is over, but a good start for the offense. John Lester has a 3 nothing cushion as we go to the second.
show in Chicagoland on High School Lights. I will be hosting. It's an exciting and informational half hour with scores, highlights, and more tonight at 11 o'clock on Comcast Sportsnet. Well, the Cubs up 3-0 as we get started here in the second inning. I think all the guys feeling pretty good after a day off, all of them getting a little rest and relaxation. That is, of course, aside from Jake Arrieta, who decided on his day off he would take a boxing class, which was actually hosted by Joe Madden and his wife, Jay. The two of them, all the charities from this and funds go towards his charity event, Respect 90. Now, guys, for those who don't know what boxing is, it's a combination of cycling and boxing put together a very intense class. Of course, Jake Arrieta always likes to change around his workout routines, but I took this class as well, and it's all based on really high levels of uh, high intensity, getting that heart rate up for 12 rounds, of course, which would be a a boxing event and about the sixth round uh, I was fading pretty quickly Jake Arrieta looked pretty good but even he reeled it back a little bit towards the end of course having to pitch tomorrow which will be right here on Comcast Sportsnet but a fun event guys of course Joe and Jay big on the cycling and boxing I would never make it through even six rounds Kelly that's impressive <laughs> yeah. uh, I've heaved after about three yeah right it's that a was just the, the cycling. Yeah, saw a little clip on the news last night. It looked like uh, it looked like fun to some. Wellington Castile, good to have him back here at Wrigley Field. Three teams this year: Cubs, Mariners, Diamondbacks. He's been traded twice. Did about a buck sixty and thirty games combined with the Cubs and Seattle. He was the Cubs' third catcher. He has been absolutely terrific with Arizona. 15 home runs in 62 games. Yeah. Well, nobody in the Cubs dugout wants him to do well this weekend, JD. I know they're all happy to see oh, he landed absolutely. in a great spot. Yeah, good guy, very popular guy in the clubhouse when he was here. It seemed uh, like sooner or later he would end up in Arizona, right after the Cubs got Montero. It seemed like. Well, he would ultimately become a Diamondback because there was the need. Just took a while for it to happen by way of Seattle. Tuffy Gosu is done for the year. A knee injury. Jared Saltalamakia, Oscar Hernandez. On their current active rosters, he takes a called third. And Steele hitting in the cleanup spot today. First strikeout for John Lester. Now among uh, catchers with at least 250 plate appearances, only Buster Posey has a higher on base plus slugging than Castillo. And Castillo has more home runs than any catcher in the NL. David Peralta ranking eighth in the league in OPS 887. He's got nine triples leading the NL on a hop and that would handcuff Russell had that weird spin and he overran it as the ball took it looked like a right turn. Yeah I had some crazy English on it. Uh -huh. Minnesota Fats to the shot. Spinning one way and then want to hit the dirt and the, and the dirt is, is pretty wet so it's going to grab a little bit more and you see it kick back the other way on him. That's a hit for Peralta. It's Monty Tomas in for Paul Goldschmidt. Big lead by Peralta. Not running. Tomas looks at ball one. Mm, good pitch. Lester doing a little double take, taking a little time to kick the dirt to the front of the mound. Saying, saying anything to James Hoy, but the body language just says, uh, I think you missed that one, big guy.
Interesting. Peralta's first move as Lester came to the plate was back toward first. For a guy who rarely throws to first, <laughs> John yeah. does get in the head of the runner yeah. sometimes. And, and when he does, he, it, he usually doesn't end well. He's only tried a couple all year. Uh, we've seen it all year long where base runners will get that big lead as they've been instructed, but they just don't feel comfortable out there. Is this going to be the time he comes over and makes a good, strong, accurate pickoff throw? I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to get victimized. The other part of it, too, if you take too big of a secondary lead, David Ross is going to take a shot at you. Two and one on Tomas, who got a six year, $68 million free agent contract. Prior to this season from Cuba, 24 years old. And he bounces it foul. Corner guy, left, right, third, and a little bit of first. He did not make their club out of spring training, but was uh, brought up on April 15th and he's been here since. Three and two. Well, and he hits the ball on the ground a lot. Um, he does swing and miss too, so those are the things Chip Hale will contemplate as to whether to start Peralta here. It's the bigger concern, the strikeout double play or the ground ball double play. Goes Peralta and the pitch is low in ball four. Last time out for John was in LA against the Dodgers. Suffered a loss. Pitched into the seventh. Uh, was going along nicely. It had only allowed one run until the seventh. The Dodgers dropped a four spot on him. He ended up losing five to two. That was his first road start since July 19th. His major league leading 18th home starting assignment. Hey, I know you like taking walks, right? Yeah. So, have you enjoyed this? We've seen five <laughs> already combined. Guys are down there flicking their Fitbits to see how many steps they've gotten in walking around the bases. Chris Owens swings and misses. 107th start for Owings, all coming in the middle infield and. The vast majority at second base. And on the outside corner, it's 0 and 2. Pitch gets away. So it'll be a wild pitch. And his second strikeout of the inning. Breaking ball down in the dirt. And Ross well positioned to block and contain that one, but kind of like the ground ball that kicked the other way on Russell. That breaking pitch kicked back the other way on David, and he couldn't keep it in front. So base open, pitcher on deck. I do not think the Cubs will work around Ahmed. You see, he has provided very little offensively. He has a lot of value with the glove. One ball, no strikes. Well, and it may be John Lester is, is a guy who rarely concedes to the middle of the strike zone anyway, regardless of the hitter and the situation. So you don't need to send him a memo. Hey, you got a base open. The pitcher's on deck. If you get behind, right. you know he, he's always trying to pound away at those corners. Well, two and zero. So the Gold Glove 
race will be very interesting, in it, I think, in the National League at short this year. Andrelton Simmons, Brandon Crawford, Ahmed. And how much will the offense play into it with Crawford? Danny Echevarria mm -hmm. certainly in that mix. It seems like it's kind of Simmons to lose now. He's it got feels the, like you know, there's a lot of really good ones, but he has that reputation, and he hasn't done anything to, you know, to tarnish his reputation. But this is yeah, this guy here. He's one when the ball's hitting his direction with two outs, you start walking off the field. Out upstairs. Peter Chase. Peter Chase. With a completion. First media relations chief with a nice two handed grab in the press box. Everybody looking up for the replay. I hope we have it. The whole press box waiting for the replay. There's Peter. Oh, come on, Peter. Acting like he's been there before. Yeah. Poker face. 2 2. It's full. Godly on deck. So at the end of the day, decided not to give in to Ahmed. Made a lot of quality pitches in that sequence. And Ahmed willing to accept his walk. Pass the baton to Godley. A little heated. I think he feels like a couple of those pitches were in the zone and he didn't get called. Through strike one. One for five with four strikeouts so far at this level. I'll tell you what, if he bunts one, you know, two strikes right back to Lester, I think he'll just flip it to Ross at the plate. Oh, absolutely. In the end. Yeah. But that's that's exactly what Godley's trying to do here. Um, doesn't look like he has a lot of confidence with the bat in his hands. So I'm sure he got instruction from the dugout. Look, Lester has issues showing the ball to the bases. Go ahead and put a button down. And see what happens. Swing and a miss. We end the inning as they strand them loaded. Three nothing Cubs early. Rizzo 
Style Pizza. It is available at all Chicago Giordano's restaurants for the next two weeks. It's called the Sizzlin' Sicilian Classic Chicago Deep Dish Pizza made with pepperoni, meatballs, and sausage. Anthony on the off day yesterday stopped by one of the many Giordano's restaurants, made a few of his own, and there it is. Dig in. It looks really good. Why don't you dive in here? That's exactly what I need to do. Okay. Weighs about 30 pounds. Anderson Russell. <laughs> Is that <Ballard>. nice? <laughs> Let's lead 3 0. Two of the runs scored on bases loaded walks. That one pummeled deep to left, and it'll go. 4 0. Godly trying to set, uh, change the tone, perhaps. He was uh, out of the zone a lot in that first inning with four walks. He challenges Russell, and Russell makes him pay the price. Number 11 for Addy. Trying to throw that cutter down and away, and it just hovers right there over the middle of the plate, mid thigh, and bye bye. Time to eat some pizza pie. Been struggling a bit over the past uh, week plus on the strikeouts, but he crushed it. And strike to Fowler. And yeah, we talked a lot about the wind today, but it's, it's, if you get it, it, the ball will go. And on the hands, and Dexter fouls it off. Number 40 already for Godley. Called strike three. Got him on a curveball. Stir not happy with James Hoy. Backdoor breaking the ball. Strike to Jackson. Lay back quickly, up and in, a little stumble on the landing. And the right hander. Pitching has been an issue for the Diamondbacks this year. Tenth of the league in ERA. Their starters with an ERA approaching 440, 11th best in the 15 team senior circuit. And they've had some injuries to deal with. Patrick Corbin is back after Tommy John surgery. He's made 11 starts. Right back to the pitcher and uh, look to Tomas. I don't know what the financial situation is with the Diamondbacks, but I would think they would be pretty aggressive this winter pursuing starting pitching with all this good young position player talent that they have. They're not far away from being a contending club. The chief baseball officer was in the press box earlier. Tony LaRusso. Oh, is that right? I didn't see him. Coughlin singled in the first. Scored on the Baez bases loaded walk. Wide for ball one. A tweet from James. He said, You guys have the best job in the universe. You get to watch the Cubs and eat pizza. Uh, I'm with well, you. Yeah, but you could do the same thing at home. Watch the Cubs and eat pizza. Kind of like Spicoli. Learning about Cuba. Yeah. 
watching baseball and eating some pizza. Addison Russell let off the inning with a home run and the Cubs lead 4 0. Matchups on the next homestand. Don't miss the stretch run here at Wrigley Field. Uh, to purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com. Good start to this one. Cubs have put up three in the first and another in the second, taking walks, hitting home runs. And the second time through the order now for John Lester. Under NCRT looks at ball one. Lester got a no decision in Arizona in late May. Game one by the Diamondbacks. They actually took two of three in that series. He gave up two runs in seven innings on May 22nd. In the game the Diamondbacks won in 13 innings. Bunted foul up along first. The Giants can cool off Carlos Gonzalez. Man, the last uh, two games for him one against Arizona, one against the Giants. Six for nine, a double, four home runs, 11 RBIs. In two games. Well, that duty will fall to Chris Heston today. Tonight. Back to Lester. Nicely done. Deja vu all over again, Yogi. And Ciarte have bounced back to the mound last time. Chris Heston for the Giants today. Jorge De La Rosa for the Rockies. Tim Linscom had hip surgery done for the year. Possibly done as a Giant. Who knows? Gosselin. Line to right in the first inning and strike one. Pirates have dropped four in a row heading into their weekend series at St. Louis. Jay Happ and Lance Lynn scheduled tonight. Made some changes to their rotation. The Cardinals have. Uh, Lynn moved back with a sprained ankle. Is that 
going to be Martinez tonight? I think it's Martinez. Yeah, yes. Martinez. So yeah, Lynn was listed. And they skipped uh, Waka, right? Waka was uh, skipped. Martinez was moved back. All these teams are kind of working on, on parallel tracks of you know, trying to win games, but trying to keep people healthy as well. And having big leads allows you to do that. Cardinals six and a half games better than the Pirates entering play today. And the Mets are kind of doing the same thing with Matt Harvey and some of their young guys. You buy them some extra time. They have a six game cushion over the Nationals. Lester Staub in the house. Was that Andre Dawson? Dawson. Where did Dawson wear eight with Montreal? Nice. Look. <laughs> Someone's got a look. Full count, three and two. There's a Hall of Famer, Goose Goslin, but he was G O S L I N. Played in the 20s and 30s. Uh, Hawk won number 10. Briefly wore 24 in 1976. His rookie season. Jackson, Rizzo, Baez, it'll be Anthony Rizzo. Into the bullpen plate area. I just thought about it. I don't know why Rich Gossage got the nickname Goose, but was it Goose Gossage because of yeah. Goose Gossage? Yeah. Kind of like Makes just sense. about anybody that has the name of Bailey becomes Beetle. Mm -hmm. All one to Pollock. Mm. Boy, he's tight down there today. So Ross chatting with James Hoy. Joe Madden. Yeah, <laughs> two. <laughs> Hitting both barrels right now. On the ground to Russell. Fires to Rizzo, and the inning is over. Two backs go down. One, two, three. Lester shaking his head, but he's ahead for nothing.
Tomorrow with the Diamondbacks, first pitch will be at 120 for 10,000 fans. Here at the ballpark, we'll receive a Cubs fleece blanket presented by Reynolds Wrap. Purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com. Rizzo shift is on for the Diamondbacks. He drives one to center. Very deep. Pollock on the warning track. Calls it in. Well, John Lester with a 4 0 lead, but he thought that was a strike. It looked like a strike. Acted like a strike, and it wasn't a strike. And after the inning, he was not real happy. Joe Madden had a few words from the dugout with James Hoy, so they just wanted to. Make sure they were yeah. somewhat on the same page. Yeah, I think Joe just out doing a little, a little lobbying effort, letting his guy know he's standing up for him and just trying to calm things down, too. Here's what we're seeing. My guys think that ball's a strike. Uh, what are you seeing? Well, I'm seeing a low, Joe. Okay, we think it's good. And a lot of times, umpires, they'll just they'll tolerate so much from the bench, and then it starts to get into their head, and they feel like they're losing their ability to do their job. Usually umpires will put up with a little more from hitters than they will pitchers. Because the hitters only get, you know, four at bats a game. And they're in close proximity to the umpire, so they can have conversations that maybe the you know, folks in the ballpark aren't aware of. Drive to right. And Ciarte is back. And he has just enough room. A couple of loud outs to start the third for the Cubs. And both those balls probably out of here the other day when it was blowing straight out and helping in all directions. Probably getting a good lesson in uh, Wrigley Field physics here today. And it might be leading to some regret for yes, exactly. Nibbling in the first day. trust. Baez rolls one into center's first hit in the big leagues this season. He took the bases loaded walk in the first. I hit 320 and change uh, down at Iowa. Had 13 home runs. He played 70 games, so the season was cut short. A duty injury and the loss of his sister early missed a bunch of time. But when he did play, he was really good. Out for a sack fly in the first inning. Is walk up music forever young. Forever young. It's great. 38 years old. One hidden concern about Kyle Schwarber missing a few days here is that he's your third catcher. So it comes down to, to Ross and Montero. Might affect the way Joe uses his bench today. Won't use Montero that early to be in a pinch hit situation. Might not use him at all now with a 4 nothing lead. Yeah, that would be the hope to take this early lead, build on it, and put this one way early. There, the Cubs were were doing that. But over the last week plus, thinking about the games they've won, they had to come back the other night against Cincinnati, and you had the Arietta no hitter, but that was a two nothing ball game. So it's not like the Cubs have had a lot of comfortable big leads. No. Well, it's. Part of the story of this season, a lot of one run wins. Pitching carried this team through the first half of the season, then they started to heat it up with the bats.
So Baez protecting that left hand. This time on the DL in AAA. And a broken finger on that hand earlier this summer. Owens out and CRT will take it. We'll go to the fourth. All Cubs early, leading 4 nothing. Hashtag Northside Data Strong fan, and you just might see yourself later in the game. Brought to you by T Mobile. The Cubs are trying to even up the season series, and yeah, a lot of Longhorn fans in the ballpark. A lot. If you're going to come to uh, the Midwest to catch a uh, weekend of football, you might as well stop by Wrigley Field. It's a pretty good weekend, isn't it? Yeah, big time college football uh, after a day at Wrigley. Cold fair Wellington Castillo will have an extra base hit. It's a double. Diamondbacks put some pressure on John in the second. And he left the bases loaded. First and third innings were three up, three down affairs. Do you know what this chant is? This is the second time this chant. I would assume been. it's related to the Texas fans being here. Doesn't it sound like a college football thing? We're gonna have to get somebody on this. Kelly, investigate this chant. Figure out what's going on down there. Fowler's got it. The Peralta. Let's go. Hook them horns. Hmm. Is that a sentence? Hook them horns, yeah. That's let's right. go hook them horns? No, the let's go thing I don't get. No. It's either let's go horns or hook them horns. Oh. Hook them horns. Yeah. There's no let's go. No. Okay. It's not very discernible. It just seems kind of random. Walked in the second. 
Runner at second, one out. We're in the fourth now. And ball one. Now I'm getting Texas fight. People are tweeting at us. I'm all confused. <laughs> Well, James Russell was a Longhorn. James no longer with the Cubs. These folks are. I have a big weekend. Yeah, I'm disappointed in you. How much time did you spend in Texas? A long time. I couldn't hear what they were you saying. Seem as confused as I am. Just, uh, just sounded, sounded like a random. <laughs> no, I'm with word you. Word they were chanting. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm led to believe it's uh, it's Texas and fight that one side says one, the other says the other. It's a strike, two and two. Yeah, you know, raising our kids down there, uh, they were under the impression you had two choices for college: uh, UT and AM. and m Didn't realize there were other universities in this nation. Moss certainly has the hit tool defensively and still struggling to find, find his best spot. What this early lead does perhaps is slow down the running game a little bit for Chip Hale. Without Paul Goldschmidt, he might say, you know, let's just. Keep keep forcing the action when he gets guys on who are capable. Well, Castillo, that's not part of his game. But a lot of managers down four, they don't like to take chances on the bases. And I would think with the right guys, he would still be pushing it. So far, the right guys haven't really been on base. Enciarde, 0 for 2. Pollock, 0 for 2. Owens, 0 for 1 so far. Those are the the biggest base running threats. Double and a line out to start the inning. Full count on Tomas. Lester brings it. And it's fouled out of play behind the first base dugout. Step off now by Lester and Ross will head out to the mound. They'll figure out what pitch they want to throw. Let me see if anybody's going to be able to figure out the signs at second base on this Arizona ball club. It would be the former Cub catcher. Yeah. But I think that visit there might have been as much about hey, don't worry about him. We've got a four nothing lead. He's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. To third, and a couple of bounces. Bryant will make the play with Castillo holding it second. I'm going to tell you something. When we start diving into college football and rivalries, mm -hmm. there's some people talking smack on Twitter right now. <laughs> Impressive and a yeah. little scary. I got to be honest. Notre Dame fans, Texas fans, Texas A&M fan, Baylor fans, Oklahoma fans. They all have a very strong opinion. 
And ball one low on Owens. The uh, Irish are pretty pretty highly regarded this year, I believe. It's uh, number eleven maybe in the poll. UT's been down. Two and zero on Owings. There we go. We're trying to even it up. Starting pitchers have had some long innings. Godley has made 58 pitches through three. Oscar nearing 70. And trying to get through four. Than hits in this game. Six walks, five hits. Yeah, and both these pitchers catching a break because it's much cooler today than it has been. Otherwise, uh, I think maybe an early trip to the showers with all these pitches in a short period of time. Owings asked for time. Three two on the way and drilled to deep left. And it's over Coughlin's head. And this will get the Diamondbacks on the board. RBI double for Chris Owings. Four to one now. <laughs> Looks like they're trying to go down and in. With a cutter. Yeah, just didn't quite get it in there enough. Opens up that hip and drops the barrel on it. So two doubles and a line out in this inning. Diamondbacks making some noise here in the fourth. Ned walked on his first trip. Cole Mentor still getting loose, and the on deck hitter now is Brandon Drury, an infielder, and he would hit for Godley. Could be that Godley is done no matter what, or only if it gets to his spot in the lineup. We'll see. I got to say that Diamondbacks have one of the best secondary logos in sports the D and the B forming the, the Diamondback head and that left sleeve. That's very sharp. I'll have to get a look at it. Okay. Popped up in the left. Whoa, 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 whoa. Coughlin with the Fowler in the area. Nice to grab. We'll get a look at that logo when we yeah. come back. Diamondbacks are on the board, four to one.
against cancer by helping raise funds for Lester Madden Ma and Rizzo's foundations in support of pediatric cancer research and awareness. The top contributor from each organization will receive two tickets and throw out a ceremonial first pitch at the game on September 20th. Visit Cubs.com slash Let's Go Gold for details. There it is. Uh, that's pretty sharp, right? Yeah. Right. The D and the B. Uh -huh. and it's like uh, you're looking down at a, at a dangerous snake. Mm -hmm. Godley gets uh, at least another inning. Assuming he gets through it unscathed. Want to know on John Lester? We want to send along happy birthday wishes, lifelong Cubs fan Bill Colton of Barrington, Illinois. Happy 92nd. Barrington Bill. There it is. Outside. 3 0. Green light him here. <laughs> wow. Walked him. Not the 3 0 Leo there. in the first now leadoff walk here in the fourth of uh, the opposing pitcher that's not good here for a young Zach Godley who had been quite good this is his fourth major league start and went six scoreless in two of the first three the other one was also a quality start six innings a three run ball so he had a buck 50 ERA as a starting pitcher prior to this one Two seventy one ERA, two stops in the minor leagues for the Diamondbacks this year. Class A and then double A. Yeah, he was a California League All Star. It's a high A level. Russell with a long home run in the second. No doubt it left. Cutter is outside. You see Godley's reaction. He knew Russell got all of it. And now the manager, Chip Hale, is out to the mound. Nobody up in the bullpen, although I think Cole Mentor may get up yet again. This definitely feels like one of those, okay, here's the deal. Yeah, well, I think I think he wants to see a little more tempo, a little more pace to this. Thank you. Sending that message to Castillo as well. Let's let's get after it. Let's get the ball and let's go. Enrique Burgos will now play catch. And this might be one of those. Burgos gets you through the inning, the pinch hit, and then maybe go to a Cole mentor who had been up a couple of times earlier. So two and zero on Russell after he walked. The pitcher Lester. Yeah, I mean there might just be a point where Chip Hale and or Mike Harkey say to Godley, I don't care if a guy hits a nine run homer. Pro strikes. Yeah, just to just stop beating yourself. Yep. Just be a little more aggressive. And, and the other part of it too is, you know, both, I think both sides know the home plate umpire has always been pretty tight here today, so you know you're not going to get those borderline calls as much as you would perhaps with somebody else back there. So let's be aggressive. Let's try to have some quick innings. Get our guys back in the dugout so they can get into a little bit of a flow offensively. It's tough to score runs when you're standing out in the outfield or in the infield in your position so long. You kind of get out of the rhythm of the game. The three two pitch. Tapped foul. Chip Hale played for the Minnesota Twins under Tom Kelly, and that was, you know, that was one of TK's um, mantras: get the boys off the field. Go out there, work quickly, throw strikes. Driven deep again. 
Way back and gone. He's hit two today. Godley can counter with, well, I threw him a strike. Well, what a day for Addison Russell. Two trips to the plate, two long balls, number 11 and 12. Here's career two homer game for Russell. That was a cookie. That was deleted. It was a deleted cookie. Six to one. Gotta love the production at the bottom of the order. Two homers and three RBIs for the rookie. Next side on Fowler. One and two. Ball strike three. Tough day for Dexter. He did walk to lead off the first, but not real happy with these last two at bats that have ended up in strikeouts. It was back backdoor cutter, backdoor breaking ball last time. This time it looked like an off-speed pitch. Up, but up in the zone. So probably thought the ball was high, but looked like it caught the top of the zone. Mr. Jackson lofts to center. Pollock makes the grab. And two outs. There a while he thought it was the third out, caught himself. He's just fighting a lot of nerves today. Me after the last inning, that, that Godley after the third out actually took a step or two back to the mound, not realizing that it was a third out. So just the opposite here in the fourth. Well, we saw uh, Billy Bean in uh, spring training when we went to uh, Las Vegas, and he kind of joked about Addison Russell. Making him look really bad with the deal he made last year. And I think Billy realized and he had to swallow hard when he made that trade to try to help his 2014 Oakland A's team getting Hamill and Samarja. But you also have to think every home run Russell hits now at the big league level makes Billy Bean go, oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's the nature of that job. But when you're in go for it mode, if you're trying to get a you know a difference maker at the trade deadline, you've got to give up. Something significant. Yeah, we might never quite find out what the other offers were from around baseball. We had heard uh, rumors and reports that the Blue Jays were really interested in Jeff Samarja. Might have been willing to give up some pitching, and it sounded like that's what the Cubs were looking for. But once Russell was offered, it seemed to be. Obviously the okay. Yeah, we'll that, that was the one that pushed the deal through. Ball four. Be it, and it is six walks allowed by Godley. That 
will end his afternoon. It is time for a Sleepy's pitching change. Cubs lead big, six to one in the fourth. Of the pen, and it is Enrique Burgos. Big hard throwing right hander in 23 games. He's pitched to a 491 ERA. So very good strikeout numbers. He'll go mid to upper 90s with a fastball and uh, complement that with a slider. 370 ERA, 11 saves between double A AA and triple A this year. You win. And chew it. Coglin, the runner at first, two runs in on the Russell Homer. Burgos will fire over. In the end, it doesn't matter, but where's Chris Coglin going and why is Burgos worried about him? Is that just a. Uh, yeah, Didn't want know. to throw a pitch. It's funny. A lot of times things happen in this game. You just look routine. Yeah. Throw to first, and then you're like, wait a minute. Why? Six to one. But Anthony Rizzo at the plate. Goes six three two fifty. One and one. Now it may be that Burgos is really slow to home, and so it's always just a matter of course for him to check okay. over there. It could be. That would make sense. But strategically, it's not really a running situation. Two and one. Anthony walked and scored in the first, really squared one up last time, but it was run down in center field by Pollock. Got a chance to hit some milestones. He's three away from 30 homers. He's already got 30 doubles. He's been hit 25 times. He's got 15 steals. He's trying to get hit, but he could have one of those 30, 30, 30 years. Homers, doubles, hit by pitches. And I'm sure would love to get to the 20 stolen base mark as well.
I don't have the list of 30 30 30 <laughs> 20 guys but I can't imagine there are a ton of them no. in major league history. Most of his running done in the first half. And that makes sense. Legs get a little heavier late in the year. And they haven't needed to run. The offense has been better in the second half. Still sporting a very robust on base percentage, 390 slugging. 526. Looks like he's coming out of that little funk he was in. Hit the home run the other day. Two real good swings here this afternoon. Six homers. Had uh, 33 doubles. Stole 22 bases. It was only hit 11 times. Greg Biggio never had a 30 homer season. So it might not be very, if, if anybody, on a list that Anthony Rizzo may start. Speaking of baseball oddities, did you see the day that Bryce Harper had yesterday? So four trips, four walks, four runs. Yep. Did not swing the bat once. So 20 pitches, never swung. Performance came in a 15 to 1 win against Atlanta. The Braves have now lost nine in a row, 16 of 17. And they're only a game out of last place now, just ahead of the Phillies. Well, if you're going to be bad, you might as well be really bad. Get a better draft pick. Side three and one. Cubs have been in comfortable counts all day. Uh, by the way, John Lester, who scored on the home run by Addison Russell, that's the first time he has ever scored in the big leagues. Ground ball to third. Russell into second. Owings is there, and the inning comes to an end. Huge day so far for Addison Russell from the nine spot in the National League. He's got two home runs.
Smith, and I am here with three generations of Cubs fans. Chris, Clark, and their father, Mab, and their sons here, which we're seeing a lot of this burnt orange and cubby blue combination this afternoon. These guys are in all the way from Conroe, Texas. But, Clark, you were drafted by the Cubs in 97. This has to be a special day for you. Yeah, my dad and I were, were able to come uh, here to the field 97, uh, just the two of us, and we haven't been back since. I obviously chose to go to the University of Texas and play baseball, which is a great choice. But we're glad to be back at uh, Wrigley Field. What do you think of the field? How much has it changed since you were here? Well, we keep looking around. Obviously, the stadium behind us haven't changed. What changed is the outfield with the uh, the scoreboard signs and all the uh, the bleacher rooftop seats are pretty cool. What are, the, what are the boys, the little guys, thinking of this weekend so far? Because there's more coming after the Cubs game, right, guys? This is the best weekend I've had in my life. <laughs> Your life? Yes. What are you doing after the Cubs game? Do you have anything planned tomorrow night? Texas game. Wait, the what, the what game? The Texas Longhorn game against Notre Dame. Um, oh, against Notre Dame. Yes. What do you think of the Irish? Um, Boo Irish. Oh, no. Boo Irish. Well, the number 11 Irish, yes, taking on Texas tomorrow night, 630 right here on NBC. Guys, thank you so much. Enjoy this. Yes, please say hello. I want to say hello to the biggest Cubs fan in Texas, Dan Illinois. There you have it. The rip for the Cubs today, guys. Texas tomorrow. This is the greatest day of my life. Oh, boy, is this great. I love it. Brandon Drury with a pinch hit single to start. The Diamondbacks fifth. Again, this team can score runs in bunches. They're without Paul Goldschmidt, but they've got some really good hitters. And they still have a long way to go. And the pitch. Ciarte bunts to Bryant. And they'll get the lead man at second. Ciarte shaking his head. He's not what he wanted to do, and I don't think it's what his manager wanted him to do. No. I'm no. down five. Well, it's, uh, you're, if you're going to bunt, you got to either drag it or, or, or push it out there towards John and force him to make a play. That would be the discussion that they would have had in the dugout or the clubhouse. A.J. Shugel is up. Diamondbacks bullpen. So we'll see him in the bottom of this inning. And it goes. Throw the second on the other side of the bag in Ciarte. Well, that answered the question we had earlier with the with the one-sided score slow the Diamondbacks down. The answer for guys like Enciarte is no. That's his 16th stolen base. And it meets with the approval of his manager. Don't have as much sock in that lineup today without Goldschmidt. So we try to press it a little bit on the bases. Uh, those folks from Conroe, Conroe, Texas, about 40 miles north of uh, Houston. That's where uh, Jeremy Burnett's yep. his Work high up. school ball. Mm -hmm. It's also uh, Andrew Kashner territory. Already showing signs of taking third base as well, and off he goes. Throw down there. Safe. It has to be an unsettling feeling for the catcher um, looking out and seeing the huge lead, and you know the guy's going, but you got to make sure you catch the pitch. You don't want to cost your pitcher a strike either by coming out of there too early. So Ross watching that thing unfold knows that NCR is going to get a huge jump on him. Outside for a ball. Cubs with a comfortable lead, so they're not worried about that run. Just trying to get an out here. So two stolen bases here this inning. Swing and a miss. Three and two. That's 41 total this year with John Lester on the mound. Most of the majors against any one pitcher.
Hits the bag. That makes it fair. And the Diamondbacks get their second run as Gosselin will have a double. Still plenty of baseball to be played here in this Diamondback club can score runs. We've talked about it all afternoon. Second in the league and runs score trailing only the Rockies. And obviously uh, the Rockies offense very much aided by the conditions of a Coors Field. Now, the Diamondbacks we play in a very hitter friendly ballpark as well. Not uh, not like Coors Field. This is a bit of a perilous position for a third base umpire, right? So he's trying to figure out fair or foul. Look at where he's standing. If that ball skids off the top of the bag, I'm not sure John Tumpain can get out of the way. So fortunately for him, he yeah. bounced over. Yeah. <laughs> he hung in there a long time to make sure he got the right read. I think I would have been, been moonwalking out of there. Strike to Pollock. But Justin Grimm is going to start to loosen in the Cubs bullpen. There it is. Right field trouble possibly that ball slicing it's going to land foul. Maybe by less than a foot. A little slice spin, and yeah, not a whole lot of room down there in that corner. Sense that it's been a bit of a fight for John all day here with a high pitch count. Obviously, at times, not pleased with James Hoy's the strike zone. Just, just a little bit off. Jackson to his right. He's got it. And Gosselin will hold at second. Steele with two outs. He has struck out and doubled. Corey Kluber has a strained right hamstring. So he's been scratched. In his start against Detroit at Comerica Park. Josh Tomlin. We'll go instead. Cooper already over 200 innings. And Steele pops it up. Ross is over. And no play. Shout out to a huge Cub fan who watches us every day, Christina McMaster from Chicago Ridge, Illinois. Ooh, look oh, out. Foul, Andy Green just got out of the way.
Ball just got out of the Cubs bullpen near third base, so caught the eye of James Hoy. Will be pitch number 90 for John. He's due up third in the bottom half of the fifth, so this could be a five and done for him this afternoon. Extra arms in the bullpen with the September call ups. Easier for a manager to make that kind of a move. This date notes September 4th, 1913. Major League debut for a guy named Hal Schwenk pitching for the St. Louis Browns. Beat the White Sox 5 to 4. He went 11 innings. Got a complete game win. He gave up 12 hits. Left hander. And that was his one and only Major League appearance. I don't know if he blew out his arm as a result of throwing probably. 190 pitches or what? But that was it. How Schwenk? Yeah. Rizzo in foul territory. I think this young Cub fan kind of sums it all up as we get into Labor Day weekend. Cubs leading six to two. This is the best weekend I've had in my life. <laughs> Your life? In baseball, reserve your place in line for history in the making. You join the season ticket holder waiting list. It's easy, it's free to register. For details, visit Cubs.com slash waiting list. Rookie right-hander AJ Shugel. Andrew Jeffrey was by AJ making his third major league appearance. Age 26. Drafted back in 2010 by the Angels in the 25th round. This is his third level this year. Really good numbers at double A, not so good at triple A. Two and four seam fastball, curveball, and a change. Yeah. 
those numbers we showed you uh, at the start here for him. That uh, represents the entirety of his major league work. Ooh, good changeup. One and two on Baez. Seems to me like the Diamondbacks and the Angels do a fair bit of uh, trading. So you get a lot of guys of Angel backgrounds between their playing for the Diamondbacks. Yeah. I've had that uh, A's Nationals shuttle working the last few years. Cubs and the Orioles. Matched up. Cubs and the Rangers. And a couple of deals. Theo Epstein running the show. Base hit the opposite way. So Baez has walked with the bases loaded. Single to center, now single to right. Now, Baez, uh, Baez, excuse me, uh, rose to the top of the prospect list because of his bat speed and his tremendous power. Um, but he is a complete player. He's a very good defender. He can run. Threat to steal a base. But Joe Madden raved about his baseball instincts in spring training. With a half swing that counts as a full cut. There he goes, Baez on the move, and he is out. Rowling applies the tag. Joe Madden wants to take another look before we resume. That close to second base. Good, good, strong throw by Castillo. His throwing numbers aren't good this year, but everybody who saw him play in a Cub uniform knows he has a real Ooh. big arm. I'm not sure he tagged him. At least not before he got to the bat. Oh, uh, yeah, he did. And that look there looked out. All right. Oof. <laughs> I know. It's almost simultaneous. I guess they will not be able to overturn that conclusively, and Joe will not challenge. Out. Barely. I mean, just in the nick of time. Yeah, there's a chance he was out after the play, too. As the play continued, he may have come off the base and the tag was held on. But, yeah, I wouldn't waste a challenge on that one. Good throw by Castillo. Driven to right. And Ciarte was playing pretty shallow. That ball's over his head. And it bounces, I think, out of play. They're going to let the play continue. No umpire made a call. I don't know if it actually did get over the yellow line in the basket and then back out, but it would have been a double anyway. Side fly to right, a fly out to right, and now a two base hit to right. This ball is moving down and in. He lifts it the other way. See ultimately what happens here. Big high bounce. Yeah. yeah, off the back wall. Lester a walk in his first career run in the fourth inning. See if he can get his first career RBI too. Well, he's got one. Just well, he does. this year. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at this year. One RBI in 2010 with Boston. It's a sack fly. Oh, Ahmed makes an error. 
Wow. Yeah, pretty rare. For the glider. Came up on him just a little bit. He couldn't handle it. It'll go as an E6. The man of the day, Addison Russell, has already homered twice. We'll climb in. Year-old Addison Russell. Oh. Billy McKinney also acquired in that deal with the A's last year. He recently turned 21. And between High A, Myrtle Beach, and Double A, Tennessee. 300 average. Not a lot of power. But takes walks. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that power will come as the player matures, gets a little bigger, a little stronger. Little, uh, likes to change up here to Russell. There's a fastball. Slowed him down with three straight changeups. Got him a little bit behind the 93 mile an hour heater. Foul to left. Off the plate inside, seeing the ball well, it's three and two. Season ended uh, in mid August with a knee injury. And that will drop foul in the bullpen. Google one of nine right handed options in the bullpen today for Chip Hale. There's a couple lefties out there as well. Another 3 2. He walked it. Right, just another great at bat by Russell. A lot of traffic on the bases for the Cubs here today. My goodness. So seven hits and now seven walks. 14 base runners and we're in the fifth. And the error. So and another runner. Diamondbacks have managed to hang around, but you get the feeling that it's going to be nine to two here pretty soon. Ready to tag. 
Peralta makes the catch, and Ross is going to hold. Peralta, the former pitcher, has got a good arm. Two outs. Yeah, I think if there's not runners on first and second as well, you gamble there and you send Ross. You hope for an air throw or a mishandle at home, but a chance still to put a crooked number on the board here with Jackson up in the bases loaded. Probably made sense to, to play conservatively there. Strike to Austin Jackson. In the right, the base hit. Here comes Ross. Lester will be held at third. It's seven to two. First hit of the day for Austin Jackson. This is still loaded. Lester now at third. Russell at second. Jackson at first. And the pitch to Coglin. This is ball one. Change up clearly the go to pitch for Schugel. See much in the way of a breaking ball from them. It's been fastballs and changeups. Day for the position players for the Diamondbacks. You can just see it in their body language out there, in the dirt. A lot of feet shuffling going on. Have already taken two bases loaded walks. Three and two. This came in the first inning. Bryant and Baez back to back. Hale making a call, just pushing back his dinner reservations an hour. Chip Hale doesn't have Steve Rain and Storm Davis on his pitching staff. T. Snow, the good first baseman. Ball four. Third base is loaded walk. Comes Mike Harkey. Eight to two. Gary Presciano be getting out his songbook with all his walk songs. Hey, there's your guy. 
Silvino Bracho. Bracho, Bracho, man. We talk a lot about September baseball expanded rosters. You get a lot of young kids in the big leagues for the first time, so it's a learning experience for them. And with the Cubs, it's all about winning. For the Diamondbacks, it's winning and also developing and getting a look at some young players. And what a tough go for these young pitchers here this afternoon. Mentioned it, the uh, Cubs came in with a 241 batting average, last in the majors, but a 318 on base percentage due to 452 walks. They have now passed the Blue Jays for the most walks in all of baseball. Yeah, it's not an exciting play, but it's certainly it's productive. And not just the walks, but forcing pitchers to make a lot of pitches. Single last time and then kapow. He dreaded mid thigh hanging changeup. Clobbered by Rizzo. 99th career home run. Second career grand slam for Rizzo. Trying to double up, chase that high fastball. Um, yeah, had five grand slams this year. Talked a lot about on base plus slugging. So, great example here. He worked the walks, hit the ball out of the ballpark. That's the third long one today for the Cubs. Check that fourth grand slam. Austin Jackson has one, but that was with Seattle. Well, I said like it, it felt like it was going to be nine to two real soon. I, I guess I undersold him. Softly bounced, third base, could throw it by Gosselin. The Stride joins the hit parade. He had walked earlier. Comes into the category playing the whole game, regardless of the score. Go hard all the time. Gets himself in there. So, Javier Baez, who started the inning with a single, will bat for the second time, but it will not be against A.J. Schubel. Chip Hale's going to make a double switch as Silvino Bracho will enter the game. And I really wish Socrates Brito were here to come in with him, but he's not. Of the all time great double switch. So it is time for a sleepy's call to the pen. Well, the two Cubs will be back.
Penn, and here is right-hander Silvino Bracho. He's in with Oscar Hernandez. He's part of a double switch. Hernandez will catch. Bracho called up when the rosters expanded on September 1st. He has pitched three times. Pitched at A ball and double A prior to being called to the big leagues this year. And he had 16 saves at double A and a 181 ERA. Bryant at first, two outs. Cubs leading by 10 here in the fifth. Strike call. And Baez. Macho not very big by uh, Major League right handed pitching standards. 5'11, a buck 80. That's his third hit. Let me repeat the wind is not blowing out today. The home run balls that have been hit have all been really squared up. We had 13 down at Triple A. Here's his first for the big club this year. A hit me slider. And he obliges. You see the, the minimal leg kick there. He can generate plenty of bat speed without all that extra motion. That's an impressive swing of the bat. So many times the narrative is after an off day, eh, you know, after the off day, the team just looked a little flat, a little out of sync. There's optional BP on the field before the game today. A few guys were out. I think the day off paid off. Yeah, I would say so. I believe six of these runs are unearned. The seven, or was it eight now? <laughs> yeah, eight allowed here in this inning. Scorecard is starting to look like a spring training card due to the uh, Ahmed error. So Tommy Lasorda he drove in seven, eight. <laughs> Man, he hit three home runs. <laughs> My opinion of his <laughs> performance. Like Kingman today. And Herrera on deck. We're only in the fifth. It's the kind of day of pre-September. Be a real good chance the Diamondbacks would use a position player at some point to pitch, but with all the call-ups, that won't be necessary. Now you might have a hard time finding somebody to volunteer to pitch down there in that bullpen, the way this is going.
the play will do another 3 2. Baez with uh, two hits, including a home run here in the inning. He might not even be the MVP of the inning, though, because Rizzo hit a grand slam. A nice conversation to have. Fun times in the home dugout. Mitchell not exactly pounding the knees, is he? Look at that uh, grid. The ball struck well. Pollock, though, will make the catch. Well, this has been a fun one. The Cubs with the most runs they've scored in an inning. Eight. The half came on the grand slam by Rizzo. 14 to 2. Baez, however, this is his uh, first major league action uh, at that position. So he moves from second to third with Jonathan Herrera now manning second. Here's Justin Grimm. He's been out for the 50th time. He has pitched to a 204 ERA. A couple of shaky ones of late, so a chance to get things turned around. Last time out, he was good. So all eight runs in the bottom of the fifth were unearned to the team. So A.J. Shugel gave up seven unearned runs. Silvino Bracho charged with one earned run on the home run. By Baez. David Peralta, ball one. And certainly no reason to push it with John Lester. So he goes five innings. He is qualified for the win. It will be his ninth, barring an unbelievable comeback. About five hits, two runs, a couple of walks, struck out three through 91 pitches this afternoon. One and two.
Two balls, two strikes. So a win here would get the Cubs to seven and a half ahead of the Giants and within three and a half of the Pirates with their games later on tonight. Russell shaded toward the middle. That's that pretty routine. I'll say this for any other reason than it just popped into my head the score 14 to 2. Mm -hmm. Probably the greatest comeback of recent note had to be in Cleveland in 2001 when the powerhouse Mariners had a 14 to 2 lead and the Indians came back to, to win that game 15 to 14. I point that out simply because it doesn't even seem possible, does it, that a team could erase this mm -hmm. large a deficit, but as rare as it is, it has happened in the past. Yeah, you I'm hear those stories every now and then. A team will score seven or eight runs in the ninth inning to come all the way oh. back from a big deficit. I will. I will boldly predict that won't happen today. Am I safe in saying that? Yeah, I would not. Uh, if you were a wagering man, the odds against that would be huge. And I am not a, a wagering man, but swing and a miss. A kind of feeble swing you get at his nasty curveball. Looking the outside of the strike zone here on Tomas. We're going there again. Two and two. Jay Happ and Carlos Martinez tonight in the Pirate Cardinal game. That's in St. Louis. Where I mean, the Cardinals have been really good everywhere, but 48 and 20 at home. The Pirates just one game better than 500 on the road this year. Having just been swept by the Brewers. I saw a note somewhere. Uh, since uh, Randall Simon uh, a sausage, uh, assaulted the racing sausage with the bat some years ago, the Pirates just have a woeful record in Milwaukee. You think that's like the, the reason? Yeah, huh? the curse of the uh, curse of the sausage. Ball four. Grim not happy with himself. It's as good a reason as any. That's a bad walk there with a 12 run lead. Still time to plan a group outing this season here at Wrigley Field. The Cubs offer special ticket packages for groups of 15 or more with exclusive benefit options, including parking and Wrigley Field tours. For more information, visit Cubs.com slash groups. Rizzo will play behind the runner, Tomas. Strike called, Chris Owens. Oh, by the way, Jake Arietta will pitch tomorrow. Hoping to continue his stellar work. That ball did not hit Tomas, and it'll only be one. How about that? Tomas standing right in front of Rizzo. Nice play by Anthony to not get distracted there as he chats with Bill Welke. Let's see this. How did it not hit his foot? Yeah, a good net, uh, net front presence there by Tomas. As he sees through the screen, makes the play, has to hesitate a bit there to get Russell into position. If it had hit his foot, he would have been out. Play would have been dead, and it would have been a single for Owens. The error that led to a boatload of unearned runs. He has walked and flied to left. Tommy Hunter is up.
Ball and two strikes. See this little dust up between Scott Boris and the Mets over the handling of Matt Harvey. So I, I just skimmed it. He had talked about a guy coming back from Tommy John that the innings thing is no surprise and the Mets are saying what but they're not. Well the Mets are going to they're monitoring and they're trying to be careful but they're going to continue for him to stay in the rotation to make starts. And Boris is arguing that there should be a strict cap of 180 innings on his client. Saying that the doctors. That if the Mets exceed that total, it would be in defiance of doctors' mandates and would imperil Harvey's future health. See, that, that is a really interesting conversation. And Scott is arguing that it should be the doctor's decision. On the ground, backhanded to Herrera, and the flip to second. Yeah, you have competing interests. You have the long term future of a pitcher and his agent, and you have the short term interests of an organization yeah. trying to win. 14 to 2 Cubs. Is with MLB.com at bat. The number one app for live baseball. Enjoy live look ins, highlights, replay reviews, scores, stat casts, live radio broadcasts, and even more. Get MLB.com at bat now. Some changes for the Diamondbacks. We will sort them out. Probably at some point. Our spring training standard is as the ball is hit to them, we'll tell you who's <laughs> where. Uh, and ooh, Ciarte. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. Backswing? Yeah, follow through. Catcher Hernandez. Trying to shake it off. Uh, Inciarte goes right to center. Tomas goes first to right. Jake Lamb he is playing first. Bracho still working on the mound. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. A 
Are you ready for the freight train known as John Lovitz? Uh, bring him on, yep. Always have fun with the former SNL star. It is almost the seventh inning, isn't it? It's right around the corner. In the dirt on Wilson Russell. Quinton Berry is on deck. That would be his cut debut. Roger likes to work upstairs with that four seam fastball. Two and one. Russell had a three homer day on his mind on that swing for sure. Two and two. Play. The lady just let loose with a primal scream when Russell made contact there. Well, they're supposed to heat up again. There could be a lot of runs going up on the board this weekend. We could hit 90 again on uh, Sunday. Rancho comes back and strikes out mm -hmm. Russell. Okay, that time up in the zone, a little cutting action. He's got a uh, very quick delivery, short, quick arm stroke. I think there's some deception there. And he, like he's throwing 96, but that's 92. A little cutting action. Quinton Barry making his cup debut. You see his career numbers. Some time with Detroit. Boston and Baltimore. 94 games with the Tigers. 21 steals in 2012. Just a handful of games the following year with the Red Sox. Same with the Orioles last year. Now debuting with the Cubs. Play all three outfield spots. Left handed batter. He's from San Diego. To a Grossmont College, San Diego State University, taken in the fifth round by the Phillies in 06. Played for uh, Tony Gwynn out there in San Diego State. There's been a lot of movement for him in his career. Padres took him on waivers from the Phillies, Mets took him from the Padres in the Rule 5. He's been in the Reds organization. The Tigers as we mentioned Kansas City. Boston Orioles Boston again and now the Cubs. Thirty years old. Able to hold up. John Tom Payne made the call at third. Twenty-five out of twenty-five in his big league career in stolen bases. And that's obviously his greatest asset. 
I can help you win a game late with his speed. Provide depth in the outfield. Three and two, Chris DeNorfia on deck. For Austin Jackson. Struck him out and Brancho fans aside, but it's 14 to 2 Cubs after six. Morphia is in left. Quentin Berry will stay in and play center. Matt Caesar is now in right. Chris Coglin's at first, so Anthony Rizzo done for the afternoon. Tommy Hunter will do the pitching. Joining us in the booth is John Lovitz. Hi, hey, John. How are you? Good to be back here. Always a pleasure, John. Uh, how many years now have we uh, had you in our booth? I think this is five. Five in a row. I think so. Well, it's glad, uh, great to I've have been, you back. I've been here longer than some of the players. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> you, uh, but you're doing great. 14 nothing. The Grand Slam was awfully exciting. This is a great game. You uh, made up a word, a flowel, which we have uh, dropped on the air oh. on occasion. <laughs> the fly ball foul becomes a flowel. You remember that? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, not only is it right, <clears throat> it's true. <laughs> Glad to see you become professional. Complete professional <laughs> adopting my terms. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. That's called a smish. You didn't know that? I do now. Yes, I do exactly. Now. How have you been, Len? I've been great, John. Thank you for asking. Uh, then, tonight you're going to be out in Schaumburg. Let's get the plug out of the oh, way. Oh, yeah, at the Improv. Improv. In Schaumburg in the, was it the Woodfield, what, Woodfield the Mall? The Woodfield Mall. Yeah. One Schaumburg. show tonight, two tomorrow, and one Sunday. Okay. Eight o'clock tonight. The way the Cubs have been swinging the bat, I wasn't sure you're going to be able to stick around. Well, well last year I couldn't because there was a rain delay. But today the weather—I mean, That's it's right. perfect. Yeah. I'd have moved here in Chicago. I did League of Their Own, and we shot some of it on Wrigley Field, and I—I I loved it so much. I wanted to move here, but then you have those brutal winters, and I like being outside too much. Swing and a miss by Hernandez. another smish. 
So, okay, uh, Saturday Night Live, you would have worked with a lot of Chicago people over the years, not only uh, <coughs> cast members, but mm-hmm. writers as well from Second City. I don't know how much time. Uh, well, the ones I off the hand I remember most is uh, Bob Odenkirk, yep. who's now on Better Call Saul. He was there as a writer in 1985 or 86 when I was there. And then I remember Bob talking about, he goes, you got to see this new guy, Chris Farley's coming on the show. He's so funny. He's funny just standing there. And uh, I became good friends with Chris. And, uh, yeah, they have great people from Second City. I think Mike Myers was in it in, in Toronto, I yep. think. That's right. And um, I was in the Groundlings Theater in Los Angeles. So the, they always go to those two places a ton. Ciarte grounds out. How... I can't believe you just interrupted me with something from the game. How rude. JD, you could go ahead. You gotta have a question for John. <laughs> yeah, nothing. I <laughs> nothing? I've got a question for you. I have a question for you. Do you know what a Who Molly are Duker you? is? Huh? Do you know what a Molly Duker is? No, and don't try to give me one either. <laughs> Keep your hands to yourself. Were you a ball player? I was, yeah, a long time ago. What's your last name? Smith. I remember you. You were on the, um, the uh, that team. Uh, uh, right. Right? Mm-hmm. He made guys smish a lot. Oh, you're a pitcher? Yeah. What do you think of the way these batters hang their head? Oh, dropped in for a single. Do I have to do your job, too? What do you think of the way these pitchers... I, I was at this Major League Baseball Alumni Association game. Really? When Mark McGuire and Sammy mm-hmm. Soda, Sosa were hitting all the homers, and Ferguson Jenkins, a Cub, and was talking with uh, Goose Gossage. They said, what do you think of these guys hitting the home runs? And they go, oh, the way they hang their head over the plate. And Ferguson Jenkins said, I'd pitch him right under his chin, back him off. And then Goose Gossage goes, I'd hit him in the head. I go, on purpose? He goes, well, not on purpose, but he goes, if you want to hit a guy in the head, you throw the ball behind him. But what do you think of that? They used to not be able to hang, crowd the plate like that? Well, yeah. There's some revisionist history, too, going on when guys get together and talk about the old days. But uh, I don't think players in the modern game um, get pitched inside enough, but probably didn't do quite as much back then as they claim. They used to hit them all the time, eh, didn't they? Not so much. What are you talking about? It's in the numbers. It's in the. It's right here in the little machine. I used to watch him hit it. Uh, Sandy Koufax, I saw a uh, flow off the left field. Uh, he talked about how he used to. Uh, he hit Kurt Flood. I think it was in the World Series on purpose. Kurt Flood owned him. Owned Sandy Koufax. Yeah, yeah. Well, he hit him in the back. Yeah. But he said he would never throw a ball at Willie Mays. Look at here's Sandy Koufax. Is, look at his. He never hit more than five in a season. That one is going to go for Jake Lamb. Is that a home run? That was a home run, John. You missed it. Mm. 14 to 4. Well, there's still 10 runs behind. If the Cubs lose this game, <laughs> we're blaming it on you. <laughs> things are going along smoothly up until this point. Well, I got to the booth there. They had 14 runs. Yeah. Now, uh, it up too. if you want me to bat, let me know. Well, the pitcher's done a good job. Did you um, ever have occasion to visit the bleachers? Did you ever sit out there for an inning or two? Or, or, you know what? You should I, do that the next time you come. When I was here in 1992 and made the movie A League of Their Own, so I stood at the home plate, did the Babe Ruth foul call, and I was in the infield hitting balls with Tom Hanks and his son on the warning track. And then I actually uh, went up inside the scoreboard there, which I don't think I was supposed to do, but I did it. So it was better than the bleachers. Have you ever been inside that I have scoreboard? Not. You haven't? Never have. I know. Yeah, it's very cool. Well, it's not cool today. It's probably pretty warm. You, you should go up there. It's pretty amazing. Okay, we'll do it's, that. Hu- it's much bigger inside. I mean, there's staircases, it's huge inside. Way bigger than it looks. And um, the view is amazing. So you hit uh, fly, fly balls to the Hanks. Was it Colin? Yeah, Colin, who was... Become a great actor, yeah. 22 years ago. So he was, you know, a kid. 
Yeah, no, that's right. Years ago, that now he's married. Movie? He's in his thirties. He's a kid. And yeah, but he was, yeah, nineteen ninety-two. Wow. That, that was a lot of fun making that movie. I lo it was great. And it is Salta La Macchia, the batter. Yeah, that's. Uh, How many times did you practice saying that? A lot. Can you say it three times fast? No, not fast. Exactly. We'll call him salty for sure. Bounce that one off his foot. Now, uh, so League of Their Own, he played the scout. That's Friend right. Good and role. you pitched I for who? Role. I enjoyed that role very much. <laughs> the whole train station bit. But so, was this a slam dunk that you were going to get that role? Was it? Uh, how'd that it was. To be? It was. They wrote it for he me. They said, this is the guy. They, yeah, Lowell Gans and Bob Lou Mandel. They wrote the movie Splash and Parenthood, and they're used to running Happy Days. And they said they wrote that part for me, and they've never written a part for an actor before or since. And I was flat. I read it, and I, yeah, I, I thought it was hilarious. And they said, I have to play this. What was her name again? This one here? Was that character? Oh, Megan. Oh, you have a picture of me. Yeah, there's Ro uh, Lori Petty and Gina Davis, uh, Megan Cavanaugh. Mm -hmm. That was me when I had darker hair and a mustache. And 30 pounds ago, Len, how do you stay so thin? I'm here. Len, you haven't gained an ounce in five years. You, you look the same, too. Yeah, I know. Still fat. Wind up, and here's the pitch. <laughs> there's the ground, and over to third to throw. He's out. All right. Here we go, John. Oh, John sorry, folks. I'd love to stay, fellas. I got to sing. <laughs> I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the Cubbies. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes out at the old ball again. Let's go! Register at your local Chicago area sports authority for your chance with tickets to a Cubs game dinner and a two hundred fifty dollars sports authority gift card and more brought to you by sports authority and majestic sweepstakes and on uh, September 13th see store for official rules. Let's win. What inning is it? What's the score? <laughs> Sid Lovitz over there. He goes, what did you do? Did you kick Brindley out of here? I said, go, go over there. They might get two innings out of them. You know, that was pretty tame, John Lovitz. 2 and 0. Oh. Uh, new pitcher, Keith Hessler. He 
this uh, parade of rookies continues. Shallow left center. Uh, caught by Inciarte. Keith Hessler, 26 years old. Uh, went to the same school as Tommy Lastella, Coastal Carolina. Diamondback signed him in 2011, an undrafted free agent. Kessler is a, a Molly Duker, by the way. Oh, yes. Yeah. Lovitz so never us, answered the question. Tell That's us a, what a Molly a, Duker a, is. A, a left handed person. It's an Australian term. And we learned that in Joe Madden's office the other day. Uh -huh. Some wine. Uh, Molly, du Molly Duker was the label or the winemaker? I'm not sure, but it was. But we learned in our meeting with Joe that. Molly Duker is a left-handed person. Caesar lines foul to left. So Grant Lloyd would have been just the ultimate, yeah. the ultimate Molly Duker, Australian left-handed pitcher. Molly Duker wines. Yeah. Simply knock it down after the bounce. So a two out base runner, and it will be Starlin Castro. In the pitcher spot. Put up 14 runs in the first five innings. Two homers by Addison Russell, a grand slam from Anthony Rizzo. Diamondback pitching has issued eight walks in this ball game. Cubs have banged out 12 hits. It's a big dude here, Hessler. He's a big Molly Duker. Recent Friday victory. I was uh, walking out with uh, a member of the Cubs organization. And he said, "There's nothing better than Friday baseball at Wrigley Field, especially when you win. You get to go home knowing that you held serve. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a really good feeling. And everybody else has to play later tonight."
two. Castro just stays alive. Caesar at first, two outs, seventh inning. All Cubs today. Bounded foul through the bullpen, and a nice backhanded stab by Hector Rondon. Miss on a fastball to end the inning. All Cubs today in the opener, 14 to 4 after seven. Tim Plum. Very nice. Tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag Northside Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. So Yoshi Wada back in the big leagues. So he was a starter earlier in the season. While here, he compiled those numbers one and one with a 373 and seven starts. He went on the DL with the left deltoid inflammation toward the end of June. Activated, sent to Iowa where he was four and five with a 395 and 16 starts. So, Moss, Owings, and Ahmed. Late afternoon snack. 36 1 32, the paid crowd, and a lot to cheer about here today. Ground ball back up the middle, backhanded by Herrera, throw to first. Ow, what a play! Well, most of what they've had to cheer about was tremendous offensive play by the Cubs here. It's a spectacular defensive play. Dave McKay arguing that uh, Coglin was off the base here. We'll take a look. Good, strong, off balance throw by Herrera. And we're taking a peek in the Diamondback dugout. And regardless of the outcome, a heck of a play. Chip Hale is. Oh, wait a minute. Looked like he was going to. Yeah, uh, he's going to challenge. Well, he is challenging. Yeah. Challenging that he came off the base. And I think he's being told that they will look at all of the different parts of that. 
So it's time for the Forsyth Technology Replay Review. I'm pretty sure Tom Payne told him that. In other words, either the throw was late or his foot was off the bag, and they will replay both of those or look at both of those issues. So the throw beat him. And I think he kept his foot on the base. Well, if he's got contact right there, clearly he's out. Yep. Well, down to ten runs in the eighth. This comes into the category of a manager just doing everything he can for his guy to get his guy base hit. And proved to his players that he's not going to give up. Dramatic pause there by John Hirschbeck before making the call. It was Owings. I guess you could make a case for uh, if. if, if. Baseball was concerned about pace of play issues that once a game got to a certain run differential that there would be no more challenges. I don't know how you would do the math on that. Got another on this date for you. All right. 1916, so 99 years ago today. Uh, I don't know. How much do you know about Christy Mathewson in terms of the his big major league career? Matty. Yeah, so 17 years in the big leagues. Did you know that he made one appearance for someone other than the Giants? Um, Caesar, no play. It was on this date. He was a player manager with the Reds. Okay. And he. Beat Mordecai, three finger Brown, 10 8. So the only game he ever pitched for Cleveland wasn't with the Giants, was with uh, Cincinnati. And uh, beat the Cubs. 13 to 12 was the final. He and uh, three fingers had a long time rivalry. Yes. Well, I should say, no, he finished 13 and 12 in terms of his teams. Beat. Browns teams in the 25 matchups 13 games to 12. He gave up eight runs in nine innings. And got the win. In his final major league appearance. Christy Matthewson was a bit of an outlier back in the day too because back in the day there was. Um, a lot of baseball players were very rough around the edges you know there's a lot of guys named Rube and there's a lot of heavy drinking and uh, just kind of a. Body type, you know, rowdy guys. Uh, Christie was a uh, Princeton educated. The quote from Kennesaw Mountain Landis about Christy Mathewson his sense of justice, integrity, and sportsmanship made him far greater than Christy Mathewson, the pitcher. So that feeds right into what you were saying. It's the second one of those today. That one maybe not quite as extreme as the one that uh, kicked away from Russell early in the ball game, but that had some funk going on as well. The spin kicks it back the other way. Uh, it will be ruled an error. It should be. It's one of those plays that looks easier than it was. Uh, and all kinds of funky spin. A little gyro ball. So is Chrissy Matthewson, uh, Matthewson perhaps the first athlete of whom that was said? Now he's a better person than he is a, a player. Maybe. Deep left. DeNorfia running out of room and he can't make the play. That ball bounds diagonally back toward the foul line. And Nick Ahmed has a triple. Owings is in 14 to 5.
Well, Just great effort. Missed. Yeah, into the ivy, gets a face full of it. Great try by Denorfia. Now it's a matter of finding the baseball. It's not there in the leaves. It kicked off the wall and rolled back in towards the infield. So I'm looking at Christy Mathewson on the baseball reference. Uh, Bill James had a Hall of Fame standards test. Uh, the maximum result of 100. The average Hall of Famer would be at 50. Mathewson, number one on the Major League Pitching list. Number three on the all-time win list. So he was the epitome of a mm -hmm. Hall of Famer. Kind of the standard for it. The all-time leader in batting, Babe Ruth. So uh, let's see, Matthewson uh, pitching points 84 out of 100. Babe Ruth 78 out of 100. Yeah, and I'm, I was wrong on the Princeton. I thought he was a Princeton guy. Apparently Bucknell. I just looked him up here on baseball reference. I don't know why I thought it Thought he was a Princeton man. Infield back with a runner at third and one out, a nine run lead. It's a strike. Seats. Back to Wada. Ahmed will have to hold it third. Two outs. A right hander named Matt Stites. Swing and a miss by Inciarte. Inciarte, nothing for four, has not hit the ball out of the infield today. Fair ball and Coglin to the bag. Ciarte thought it was foul. It's an unearned run for the Diamondbacks. Cubs lead 14 to 5 lead.
And anywhere from 15 to 55 include food, all you can drink, and parking. To book your premier experience here at the ballpark, visit Cubs.com slash suites. Matt Stites, right-hander on for the Diamondbacks. Rate of rookies continues for the D-backs here this afternoon. Stites has pitched five big league games. This three and a third inning so far. He was drafted by the Cubs back in 2010. Opted not to sign. Went on to play uh, at the University of Missouri. Big day for Baez. Bases loaded walk. Single, single, two-run homer. Two hits in that eight-run fifth. Put this one to bed. Two and all the count. It's a strike two and one. Mm. 14 to 5, bottom of the eighth strike. Popped him up. The catcher, Hernandez, took it away from Lamb. Who's now playing third? Who's on first? What's on second? He's been there for more than an inning. <laughs> Hutchison supposed to pitch for the Blue Jays tonight. Do you know what his record is? I do not. Drew Hutchison is 13 and 2. You know what his ERA is? 4.61. 487. Okay. Yeah, well, a lot of people would be lining up to pitch for that team. Swung at it. So he's out two away. I'm trying to find Drew Hutchison in the run support that he gets. Jay's uh, gotta be ridiculous. Jay's game and a half better than the Yankees. So that's a tight race. Rangers just two games behind the Astros in the AL West. Pop by Herrera. So well, this is going to make people's head hurt. I'm just giving you the facts, the numbers. According to baseball reference, Drew Hutchison has been worth negative a half a win above replacement. Which means he's been essentially replacement level pitcher and he's 13 and 2. Two. So Huh, okay. Shelby Miller. Let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum. He's 5 and 12 with a 2.56. According to baseball reference, he's been worth four and a half wins above replacement. And he's 5 and 12. Yeah, and it's a very, you know, it's, just, you know, it's very difficult to dissect all those numbers too pale out now. I think Hernandez maybe got hit again by backswing, and it was Herrera last time. So he may want to set up a little deeper here for self preservation.
It almost looked like the bat caught him on the way through the first time, too. And Herrera would have reacted had he, had he clipped him on the way through. Now think about that back in the day when they used to just wear the regular baseball cap with the old fashioned mask. He's being carted off on a stretcher right now. Yeah, so I bet you there are a lot of people that follow the Braves. When talking about Shelby Miller, would say, "Why well, he just pitches well enough to lose?" Right, and, can't, and Drew, can't win. Drew Hutchinson, they will say, he finds a way to win. Um, Hutchinson's been better as of late. Actually, his ERA was five and a half uh, at the end of July, and his FIP is about to run better than his ERA. But yeah, no, Shelby Miller's been a lot better this year. 14 to 5. The Cubs lead as we go to the ninth. Race. Pirates leading the way right now. And we'll see what they have left uh, on their schedule. They have the most games against teams above 500. The Cubs have the same amount of games left, although they're going to check one off here in the next three outs. And the Giants just may run out of time, even if they are able to take advantage of a softer schedule. Yeah, a lot of games within the division, but you know the storyline with the Giants earlier in the year was they would beat up on the Dodgers, but they couldn't beat the other teams in the division, the, the below 500 teams like the Rockies and the Diamondbacks. So what appears to be a soft schedule for them may not actually prove to be. And Travis Wood now, who will work for the 44th time, and three outs to go to put this one to bed. One other note um, the Nationals are a half game behind the Giants. So mostly because the Giants have fallen so far are we mentioning the Nationals. It's not as if you know they've won 12 out of 15 or anything. They're seven and a half behind the Cubs. Two balls and a strike. Wood against Gosselin. Who's now in left. Did you know that? No. No idea. <laughs> Once Lovett's got in here. I mean yeah, it all yeah. blew up. All bets were off. Travis the fifth cup pitcher to work here this afternoon. John Lester with the start went five innings. He will pick up his ninth win. Scoreless inning for Graham. Tommy Hunter allowed two runs on three hits in an inning of work. Sushiwada worked the eighth, allowed a hit, a run. It was unearned.
Three and two on Gosselin. He walked him. Here's Jacob Lamb. Homered in the seventh. Looking for their 76th win. They have a better record than both of the other division leaders in the National League. Trevor Cahill, a former Diamondback, is up. Gathered into short center and a base hit. Diamondbacks two in the seventh, one last inning, couple base runners now to get things started in the ninth. Chip Hale can take some consolation in the, the fact that his guys have not given up here. Cahill okay, up, not so much that Joe Madden's worried about this one getting away, but pitch count would be the consideration. Doesn't want to. I would throw so many pitches here today that he wouldn't be available tomorrow. Switch hitting. Jared Saltalamakia. He's single in the seventh. Triple plays in order. Hard hit ground yeah. ball that takes Baez right to third. Yeah, just a little you know, cut fastball in a little bit. Oh. I believe there's a starting pitcher on deck. Chase Anderson. For Stites. One, two. Lester, Grimm, Hunter, Wada, and Wood for the Cubs. Godley, Burgos, Shugel, Bracho, Hessler, and Stites for the Diamond. All rookies, right? It could be, yeah. Single guy that has pitched here today is the D backs as a rookie. Full count on Salta Lamaki. Swing and a miss, strike three. And here is Anderson, who will not pitch in this series. Aaron Hill is uh, on the bench, but he's been uh, dealing with a, a little bit of a hamstring issue. Otherwise, I'm sure he would get that bat here. I think. No career extra base hits. Anderson six out of 77 to start his major league career.
pitches in his home ballpark. It's named after him, Chase Field. Let's hope he has a good home record. Ooh, swing. Wade Miller was pretty good at Miller Park back in the day. Right. Joseph AT&T hasn't fared so well in San Francisco, <laughs> but I don't have the numbers. Balls, two strikes. I've seen Travis use his change up a little bit more in recent outings, and I think you know, get, get into a blowout game like this, it's tough for a you know a relief pitcher to come in, pitch an inning at a time. It's hard to really work on anything. You're trying to add a little something to your repertoire. If you're pitching in tight games, you really can't afford to do that. I'm not saying the changeup is a new pitch for him, but I just mean in terms of the amount of usage. Try to keep that field. Hopped up. And Herrera has to dive to make the catch. Two away here in the Diamondbacks ninth. That's kind of peculiar. Probably didn't anticipate having to lay out for that one. Two on, two down. Cubs lead by nine. Here in the ninth inning. And even this homestand record at two and two. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. Big offensive day. Lots of walks. Some home runs. Result basically decided about a good hour and a half ago. Jake Arietta, reigning pitcher of the month, coming off a no hitter, will pitch tomorrow. And Lester will improve to 9 and 10 on the year. That ball nearly hit Tomas, instead, he fouled it off the handle. And he stung. Pitch inning for Travis Wood. Okay, Hill continues to throw in the cup bullpen. For Joe Madden, you hate to make a pitching change at this stage of the ball game, but if he loses the Hamas here, he may do it. Swing 
Cleanliness. He got him. Cubs win. 14 to 5 the final. And Addison Russell with two home runs. First time he's done that in his major league career. Javier Baez had a huge afternoon. Anthony Rizzo with a grand slam. And all over but the shouting pretty much by the fifth inning. Yeah, a 62 ball game heading into the bottom half of the fifth inning with his Diamondback uh, offense. And uh, John Lester having thrown a lot of pitches to that point in the game. It was still a game that could have gotten away, but the Cubs are up for eight in the bottom half of the inning. And pretty much all she wrote. Katie bar the door. So our Benny's beverage at Depot toasts of the game. We're going to go with Russell Rizzo and Baez. You know why not? Uh, Addison Russell, his first career two home run game, jumped on a couple of fastballs from the rookie starter Godley. Anthony Rizzo with the big blow cleared the bases. Out home sausage, pepperoni, and meatball with that swing of the bat. And Javi Baez also going deep on a three hit afternoon. So the Cubs take the opener. And let's go down to Kelly. All right, Anthony, 14 runs, eight, eight of them there in the fifth inning, half of which came off your bat. Could you have envisioned a better way kind of starting this weekend off? Uh, no, it was great. Uh, we had a nice off day yesterday, and uh, we came back ready to go today. And uh, It's a good performance by us to get that win and uh, finish up the home stand. Do you feel like that really rejuvenated, guys, just to have that extra day there? Absolutely, uh, especially now in September to get a day off. It's huge. Uh, and. Uh, Come out and score as many runs is nice. We gotta, we gotta show up tomorrow and get ready to go. With that lead, I felt like Joe was able to give you a breather, some other guys. How important could that be down the stretch? Uh, to get a breather like that is good, especially after the day off. Uh, and then to get the breather like that, it's huge, huge for me personally. And I know KB likes it, all the everyday guys like it, but uh, more importantly, we got the win today. Joe mentions a lot that September kind of brings its own energy. Are you starting to feel that at all in these games? Uh, not yet. I mean, we're just we're just having fun, and uh, we want to keep playing good baseball. We try not to get wrapped up in the standings, uh, and uh, just want to keep playing baseball and have fun. All right, Anthony, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Two for four, four RBI for Anthony Rizzo, a new season high, 83, guys. Kelly, thank you for all your work today, and we will be back with you tomorrow. Cubs winners today, 14 to 5, the final, 12:30. For our pregame coverage is Jake Arietta Day. It should be a lot of fun for the middle game of this series. For JD, for Kelly, and our entire crew here at Wrigley Field, Len Casper inviting you to stay tuned. Blue Cross Blue Shield Cubs post game live. Next.